What's cracking, guys? Omar Esop here with two very special guests. I got the main man himself, Greg Knuckles. We're finally reunited, and can I just say the sexual tension is at an all-time high? A lot of eggplants, <laughs> a lot of peaches. <laughs> a lot of eggplants, a lot of peaches going on. And Coat himself, Clarence Kennedy, we're all here in New York for a Gravitas event. They're like, don't say Gravitas, guys, don't say it. So this is going to be a loose and formal Q&A. We decided to record one. We posted a photo on Instagram. It has currently about 250 comments, questions. So please don't be hurt if your question does not get answered. And also, if you want like a really in-depth answer from Greg, like, you know, you're thinking, wow, Greg's in the photo. I'm going to ask all about periodization. This is probably not the time, you know. <laughs> Again, it's late at night, so forgive us. Yeah, so let's begin. If you guys like this video, make sure to like the damn video. First question, what's one country you want to visit before you die? I don't know. I've been to a lot of countries, really. Like, my parents are, like, obsessed with traveling. Really? Yeah. So what's one place you haven't been you want to be? North Korea. North Korea. That's, can I just say that's not a safe choice? <laughs> I, I've been through the uh, Reykjavik airport, but I'd like to visit Iceland. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good choice. I think Japan uh, mm -hmm. would be for me, just for uh, multiple reasons. People want to know, know. People want to know if the photo of us is like a remake of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you would be because of the beard. I'm just probably going to say Gimli. Yeah. Who are we? So I think Clarence would be Aragorn. Cool. He's yeah. the strong, silent type. Sure. Which, uh, that makes you like a last by process of elimination. Aw, oh, thanks, bro. Or, I, I thought you were going to say Pippin or some shit. I was about to write. Here's a real question. How does one fix low bar uh, squat tilt? So if someone is rising with their hips too early on the squat, low bar in particular. More often than not, it's because they got weak quads. Sure. You guys don't understand how verbose Greg is. You would be used to, if this was four hours earlier and five beers less, you'd be, you'd be getting a four minute answer right now. No, so, so I mean, the, the first thing to look for is, is weak quads. Sure. Beyond that, I mean, it could just be a matter of that's, that's how you learn to do it. I think with the squat, the relative muscular effort for the knee extensors is at its highest at the very bottom of the lift. Sure. And so it's, it's natural that that's going to tax the quads as much as they can be taxed. And so your knees are going to kick back. Obviously, since all of your body segments are connected, your hips are going to kick back as well. And so I think that's just a pretty natural way for hard squats to kind of turn out. But by getting stronger, you push back the point at which that begins to happen. And let me ask then a weightlifting question. Do you program at all the SOTS press over your head? Um, is it a mobility drill? Like, how do you use it? Yeah, it's definitely, like, really good for mobility. Okay. Um, as, like, a strength exercise, uh, I don't see the benefit of it at all, <laughs> really. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to do, actually. Like, a lot of people can't do it with just, like, a stick or a bar. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, like, you have to have, like, really good mobility for it. So, sure. Yeah. It's a great mobility exercise, but as a strength exercise, I don't really see the benefit. Okay, asking the tough questions here now. Top three animes. Clarence, you want to take this one? I'm really big into Dragon Ball Super at the moment. Okay. Um, Death Note was pretty good. Oh, Death yeah. Note, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Attack on Titan, yeah. Attack on Titan yeah, is cool, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. Wait, you watch an anime or no? I go, Pokemon? That's, <laughs> is, like that, way back. is that even anime? I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you can uh, count I'd say Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, yeah. and Gundam Wing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gundam Wing, it's the classics. opening has, yeah, the classics. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, of the recent ones, One Punch Man. Okay. For me, if you've all yeah. watched that, Greg, if you have any time in between your research, you know, trying to contribute to humanity, <laughs> and you want to just chill for 22 <laughs> minutes, watch an episode of One Punch Man, it's actually hilarious. Here's a question, yeah. Would you, uh, Clarence, would you recommend the high bar squat for powerlifting ATG? Do you, co so you you do some coaching, do you coach at all um, Power powerlifters? Lifters? Yeah. Um, no, I don't really all weightlifters. <laughs> all weightlifters so, is the majority okay. of what you do. Probably won't be the best person to ask that. <laughs> but so, yeah. and for every single uh, weightlifter, just to be clear, you obviously program the high bar squat and every yeah, low course, bar yeah. squat. Yeah. Yeah, like front squats, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Like I think it's better to um, do more back squats, like compared to front squats, because like front squats is like such a taxing exercise sure. in the body. So like most people are suited to doing more back squats than front squats. So, yeah, front squats. Greg, for you, dude, because actually you have a lot of fantastic articles. Got to give the bless up to you. Uh, when it comes to the squat, when trying to determine for a lifter to choose between a high bar or low bar uh, squat, what are the key indicators of where they should go? I remember before you talked about thoracic extension or the extensors, um, but anything you want to say in that? Because there are some people, there are some people that are super strong. John Hack would probably call as a high bar squat. 
And he pretty much is the strongest 83 kg lifter. Try them both and see what feels best. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah. why, why, do you think, why do you think that is? So you see all these weightlifters, Greg, mm -hmm. they're like strong as hell, and they're in that high bar position. Like they're kind of just like upright, vertical, torso, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, there's powerlifters that do low bar, and they're also really strong. So mm -hmm. it's kind of just about finding what works right with your morphology. Yeah, I'd say so. I think that for, for most people, when they first try low bar, it'll probably be stronger than... Than their high bar yeah and i do think that that that's mostly down to thoracic extension strength yeah and it's basically load times angle of your femur relative to the floor okay and that's going to be true of literally any squat style i think if you're a power lifter and you want a low bar squat it's just what feels good to you and you can probably move more weight that way initially then why not i don't think there's a problem with that yeah but you know if you don't like low bar squats so much like maybe they make your elbows feel weird uh, I think if you stick with high bar squat and work on strengthening your T-spine, that's also a very viable option. Yeah. Clarence, here's the question for you, bro. When are you planning on squatting 318 kilos, so 700 pounds, oh, yeah. ass to grass, beltless, no wraps, pause, 100% raw, but with your watch? Well, let's just say I've already squatted over 300 kilos. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've heard a rumor or something, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just haven't uploaded the video on YouTube, so I'm just not going to say what I've squatted. Yeah. yeah. Keep the secret. Stay tuned, yeah. bro. Yeah. What do you think of English people? I'm just reading a few of them. <laughs> what do you think of them, bro? Have you visited the UK? Yeah. At all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think? Like, nice? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 This is a trick question. Someone said, do you pour the milk first and then the cereal or cereal first, then the milk? Anyone that pours the milk first and then the cereal is a cereal killer. That's your thing. What do you do first? It goes cereal, then milk. Yeah. Cereal, then milk. Clarence, don't let me down here, bro. <laughs> So they just think, what do you do? What, what do you do? Like, cereal in the milk. For sure? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, I, I, I put them in a... I put, I in a blender? Put, just put them both in a shaker bottle. And shake it up and see <laughs> on a blender <laughs> bottle. <laughs> oh, okay. So actually, this one will be uh, quick for you to explain, Clarence. For you, your excessive hip hinge on the squat, knees way forward, squat style. This guy, I think, clearly doesn't know about uh, your knee issues. Oh, yeah. You so know where you, like, your hips yeah, rise yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, you change your squatting style, yeah. Yeah, I, I just changed my squatting style. Um, I didn't really do it intentionally. I just kind of did it automatically just to take a strain off my knee. So yeah. my squats just kind of look a bit weird. Yeah, and you've yeah. dealt with uh, some serious well, knee issues. Well, not serious knee issues, but like tendonitis. Yeah. It's really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got like surgery on both my knees, and unfortunately, the pain is coming back, so... <laughs> Man. Greg, this is a good question for you. Someone wants to know about elbow flare on the bench press. Okay. Because you are, uh, a lot of your articles, and we'll link your website, Stronger by Science, in the uh, description, but a lot of your articles take common, maybe either misconceptions or the way people think and turn it around and provide new insight. And one of your articles talked about elbow flare. Somebody wants to know in this comment, when should you flare your elbows or is it acceptable on the bench press? You should flare on the concentric, like as the bar is coming up. Once the bar is like a few inches off your chest, so essentially you're going to need to tuck some just to touch low on your chest, but you also don't want to lock out low, like you don't want to press it in a straight line, just straight up. You want to touch low and then get the bar back over your shoulders, upper chest as quick as possible. So as you use your leg drive to drive that bar back as you press it up off your chest, then you're going to flare your elbows as the bar reaches the midpoint of the lift and keep them flared to keep that bar over your chest through lockout. Clarence, for you, do you think tricking has helped with your explosiveness when it comes to lifting? A, so first off, what's tricking for those that don't know? And then B, do you think that's true? Because we're, we're watching you snatch today, and actually the first thing I think Greg said to me, he's like, he's like that dude is quick. Like, just with the movement. Yeah, yeah so tricking um, is basically like an underground sport. Well, it's getting more popular now these days. But it's a mix of martial arts, uh, gymnastics, and maybe a bit of break dancing. Yeah. So yeah. Just, like most people that do tricking, they just teach themselves how to do it. And that's how I did it. And it's kind of how I got into weightlifting as well, because um, I actually wanted to improve my explosiveness. <laughs> sure. Yeah, for tricking. So it's, it's the opposite. So it's the opposite. Yeah, so you had <laughs> weightlifting to become more explosive. Yeah, yeah. Were you an explosive kid? Like, kind of, like, were you fast? Were you jump high? Like, yeah. Definitely. For your age yeah. and stuff? Yeah, yeah. naturally. Yeah. I was. yeah, okay. And then a follow up. Uh, <clears throat> We know you've snatched 187 kilos. Are you gonna snatch 190? Um, oh, maybe. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. something going on here. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> oh, bro, I gotta give the sickest shout out, Greg. We were just talking about you, Tico. He's probably gonna be watching Tico! this. Tico, Tico, Tico's yes! our homie from Toronto. No joke. He says, uh, Greg Knuckles, what's your burger game like as of late? Hopefully, better than a few weeks back. What's that about? Tico has a, has a long history of. 
No, of taking part in food challenges. Yes. And getting this clock cleaned. <laughs> right. So I recently got a meat grinder. Okay. My burger game is on point. Uh, the reason I got the burger at lunch today is it was a Pat LaFrida burger. Okay. Which is like cr cream of the crop patty. And so I basically wanted to be able to compare my burgers to a Pat LaFrida burger. Tico's just talking shit. Tico is under the false conception that <laughs> he has a burger game adequate to measure up to mine. It, as it generally goes with Tico and food challenges, he is... Sorely mistaken. Sorely mistaken. Okay, yes. okay. Clarence, for you, will you ever consider qualifying for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics? If not, why? You told me that you're kind of pretty yeah. much done competing, but like... Yeah, I'm definitely done Yeah, competing. Yeah, um, I've just really lost interest in the way the thing, uh, where it's going, uh, the way things are run, so yeah, yeah. that's a short answer. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things, yeah. people, you spoke to me privately, yeah. but there's a lot of things people aren't aware of when yeah. it comes to the Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, like people don't realize that uh, everyone uses drugs. Um, yeah. It's probably the most unfair competition <laughs> yeah. ever. For yeah. way of thing, it's not about like uh, like talent anymore, it's just about like where you're born, really. Like if you're born in, let's say, North Korea, yeah. like, are you going to be drug tested? Yeah, like out of absolutely not. Like, do you really think water is going to enter North Korea and yeah. test their athletes? Okay, so this is a serious question and there's clearly only one right answer. Okay. What is your choice starter Pokemon for the original series? I know, Clarence, we've talked about Pokemon before. You played the original uh, Pokemon? Oh, yeah. There's one right answer. I know what you guys are going to say, and you're wrong. Greg, go ahead. Give me your 10 second spiel. Who would you say? It's, it's Bulbasaur. It's, I, no! It's God, not Charmander. It's obviously Squirtle. Squirtle? I was going to say Charmander. Oh my, it's we each have a good Squirtle. Squirtle. <laughs> Bulbasaur has dick veins, bro. Dick vines, sorry. He has a parasitic <laughs> organism on top of his back, <laughs> consuming his soul. He's sacrificing his like consciousness for Ash Ketchum. I want to know in the comment section but, but below then, what then, everyone thinks is the best. But course. then, who do you have to fight Lorelai in the Elite Four? Jesus, how do you remember all the names of the <laughs> gym leaders? Of gym? Well, guys, that was the Q and A. Hopefully, you enjoyed this midnight one a.m. in Brooklyn, three bros united Q and A. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like the damn video. Also, make sure you check out first Greg Knuckles, Stronger by Science. Link will be in the description as well as the Instagram if you want to creep him out, check him out, and Clarence Kennedy. YouTube channel will be in the description. Bro, why don't you upload more? Um, I don't know. I just like uploading every like three months. I almost feel like just you have like, like PRs you haven't released or something. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll catch all of you, my rascals, in that next video. Peace!